Okay. <coughs> We're going to make a second deal. I'll have to get it up to size. And I need to get my little felt tip pen going. <coughs> so we're coming in the second case. I want to show some stuff about adenoid tissue. And uh, this is a rather unique case. It's got a lot of, in addition to adenoid tissue, we have several other things to cover in it. Okay, I'm Bill White, and uh, I'm going to run through this. Uh, it's part of our lecture series, and I'm going to try to get it on tape here. Uh, this second case is a young man who had some rather large adenoid tissue, and he has a slightly overdeveloped anterior lower third of the anterior face is slightly more than we would like and he's a, got a lack of jaw length really he jaw needs to be out a good bit further uh, to line up real good and the bite being open makes this ba uh, even worse it's where if you could close the bite some this chin would move forward a little bit would help it some but he has a the problem here with a just a slightly short lower jaw and a little excess vertical height of the face makes it even look worse. Now these are some pictures that were taken after we had started and kind of got his teeth together. So you can see this is down the way some. He looked a little worse than this when we started and we used a occipital headgear to help lower this vertical height of the face and we're pulling up in this direction and this is goes through and hooks about where the in front of the molars a little bit to pick this up we'll show that a little bit more down the line now when we look at the young man's models we see a lot of problems here. He's a thumb sucker, and you can see where the thumb must fit in there. Also a tongue thruster. He's got a couple of fused teeth over here, and so we band these lower right lateral and central and put little prongs on them to help stop the tongue thrust and also the thumb problem he's got and we're going to have to try to develop the airway in addition to remove the adenoids and the tonsils we're going to try to widen the upper arch out we'll widen the lower too to some extent and we can show where people who breathe through their mouth uh, tend to have a high palate and it'll be rather narrow. So we're going to try to widen it out and work from that standpoint. We're also going to remove some teeth on him. It's the second bicuspids, the permanent second bicuspids, and of course you don't have any <laughs> second deciduous bicuspids, but uh, take his second deciduous molars and his second bicuspids out on both sides of the mouth. And they'll be putting a lot of force on the six-year molars back here, and hopefully we can intrude both the molars. Whatever we can gain back there and reduce the height of the face out here, that'll be helpful to us. And so we'll do the best we can with the case. On the left side of the mouth, we do the same thing. We're going to come in and take all these four teeth out on that side of the mouth. Uh, that jumped me back into the... So, now we'll take all the teeth out on this side of the mouth. I've got to go back and get my little deal working here.
Okay. So we'll remove these teeth. Excuse me. Felt tip pin. All right. So we're gonna <coughs> take the bicuspids out. Second bias on both sides of the mouth plus the deciduous teeth. Now, this fused tooth right here, we'll have a little problem with it. We treat it like one big tooth, so we just put a bracket out here in the front of that fused tooth and kind of deal it like deal it like a big, just one large tooth in there. And I'll show that at the end how it works out. Uh, now, looking at it, from the cephalometric standpoint, you can see the open bite problem, and you can see where his tongue goes, and he also he puts his thumb in there some of the time. And so we put some little fingers on those lateral and central on the right side of the mouth. Uh, this is the adenoid tissue. You can see it kind of outlined right here. I'll erase that line so you can pick it up. So we send him into an ENT guide. I got one that helps and kind of understands the facial problem. If you let a child continue to breathe wrong, where you develop this lower, longer, lower third of the face. So anyway, he comes in and takes the adenoid tissue out. Now. If you remember, the adenoid tissue came way down like this, something like that. And we've removed the adenoid tissue and the tonsils, which I can't show this. Uh, let me go back and you look at the adenoid tissue again, where it is in here. And now we'll look at the next uh, panoramic, I mean, cephalometric picture, and you can see where it's gone, and we've got a tremendous amount of airway on this side of the mouth now, and that's going to help us in overcoming some of the problems that we've developed here. Now, there's a blown-up shot of the adenoids, and then we'll have a shot just like that where we, the adenoids are gone. So you can see what they did. They blocked the airway and he had to breathe through his mouth and when they breathe through their mouth they, they don't uh, warm the air up to body temperature and they don't correct the humidity of the air so the mouth dries out when you breathe through it and you don't suck the air down with any force so it doesn't go out into the alveoli like it does if you pull the air through the nose. And then you also get uh, allergens in the air if you breathe it through the mouth, they just are brought into your body. So we have some kids, I've had kids before that had trouble with lung problems. We're seeing a physician because of problems with their lung. Once we got them breathing through their nose with their lung problems cleared up, the nose picks up the allergens or whatever's coming in and kind of feeds it back through the throat. You swallow it usually, and it doesn't hurt the stomach, but it does hurt the rest of you. So here you can go back and look. On this side we had a over-retained deciduous cuspid. At least the one on the other side was gone. And so these teeth all kind of were pushed more to this side where the tooth was gone. And this space over here is much less than it is over on this side, you see. So these teeth had moved off the midline that much. Now, We have a upper cuspids that are crowded out. And so we've come in now with a palatal separator. You can see it's built up in this area and the palatal separator is being cracked apart. And so we can increase the width 
of the maxilla and we don't take these teeth out till after we've separated the palate and so you can see where we had to separate our own deciduous teeth in here and we take it out and this, this young man loses the deciduous teeth pretty early up in this area. So now at this point, we've taken the palatal separator out, so we're going to come in and remove these teeth. This one, the deciduous molar is already gone, and this is the bicuspid, but it has very little root on it right here. <coughs> so we've removed the second deciduous molars and also the bicuspids in the case, the second bicuspids, and we're putting force now on these molars, and so they're being intruded to some extent, and that helps lower the vertical dimension of the face out here. So, at least that's my thinking on it, and it seems to work. And now we've started in with a, a two by four applies where we put brackets on the molar, I mean bands on the molars. And I came in and bracketed the deciduous molars up here. Well, actually, that's a, no, I put a bracket on the bicuspid, actually, the bicuspids in here, and we'll start working from there. And we put brackets on the other bicuspids. Their deciduous teeth are all gone at this point here. Now we'll close the space up and lining the teeth up, getting them paralleled and everything. Here's that big fused tooth. We're dealing one bracket of this fused tooth and I have a bite together. And this is class two-ish and pretty big over jet here so you'll see three more lower anterior teeth than there actually are. So there's only these two and this fused bunch in here so you can ignore that one in the, on the side there. Now we've lined them up and it's coming along pretty good and you probably could keep his wisdom teeth if you vertical needs to be dropped even more, you can come in and take the wisdom teeth out somewhere down here, not necessarily at this time. So we pretty well finished him up, and this is, he's 12, nearly 13 years old at this point, and his trigger motors are in, and we've got them all lined up in pretty good shape. Now, this is, uh, still shows the little fingers there we had for the tongue for us. And this, the case is finished at this point. Now I'm going to go in and show you what we did clinically. And you can see the arch wire. This is a rectangular wire we've got in here open in this space, waiting on these cuspids to come through. And we've got plenty of space for them. This is a little flimsy wildcat wire in here but it's rotating and correcting a lot of this and you'll have to get into a heavier wire to get it down like that to bring these down or you could put the intruding wire on if you really were in a hurry to get that opened up. Now we put the bands around these two teeth and put a, the little fingers to keep the tongue back you can see this in this next. No, that's just showing the palette how much we've opened it and everything. And uh, now the cuspids up above have come in, and we get brackets on them. Sometimes we have to push them up under the gum to get them on. And then this wire going up here, if the wire wants to be down here, so it'll pull the tooth on down here, which the tooth is going down there anyway. So to get it in the correct place if all possible. Now, this looks like we've separated the palate and got it pretty wide. We've taken the separator out now, and now we'll go in and work on the teeth up above. 
the fuse tooth we pulled up and we'll have to get it around on this side and we'll just take it apart and just leave them lined up like that so that's going to look pretty good now this is the occipital headgear that we have in the auxiliary tube over here and this little point right here goes under the arch wire and we're pulling up maybe say out the bows are out like that and you pull up you're pulling these teeth up and it helps keep them from erupting down and so we can help lower the vertical dimension of the face like that so here's the original models of this boy's face and where we were going to remove all these teeth in here on that side and I'll go to the so this is what it looks like after we finish the case so we've got him in a pretty good class one case right in here and the teeth are coming out good this will actually sock in better than this over a period of time the high points will just kind of wear down now this is the open bite side and there it is straight on you've still got a little opening of the teeth and they should close in and close together there uh, after a few weeks now let's see okay the other side of the mouth and there it is after we finished it so you can see the difference in it now one thing I want to bring out we we put a palatal separator to widen this out and you would see these teeth are angled at a kind of a sharp angle and the lingual cusp are taking a lot of the, the chewing is kind of happening on them so we want to spread this out but we want to keep the teeth straight up and down so that we know that the roots got out also and this guy's we I take this stuff too is uh pretty good at that. Alright, we're gonna band these up and we put the palatal separator in here. And there we've separated the palate now. And you'll notice these teeth are straighter up and down. The lingual cusp aren't hanging down as low as they are before we started. You see the lingual cusp up and the tooth is tilted out more there. Now let's go back and look at these. You see how they're straighter. So we got the roots of these teeth out buckly so that increases the airway and gives us a much better chance of finishing this case up good. Now here on the lower side we're in pretty good shape anyway but we'll need to widen it a little bit since we widen the top and we'll deal with these two teeth like one tooth see and line them all up and they come out pretty pretty good really now you can see how the fused teeth have lined up we got the incisal contact points lined up going around here which really worked out quite well on this young man. Now, at finish, you look at his chin. It's still in and out far enough. In other words, he's got a short chin. Now, we got a good smile line. The teeth are all lined up and bites closed and everything else is quite good. And I think this may be the last of the pictures we have on him. But uh, this is a guy that we did everything we could think of to lower the vertical height of the face. We used the occipital headgear. We removed some permanent teeth to help seat the uh, jaw and maybe it'll reduce this height of the face. It looks fairly normal now. And we corrected the airway and got rid of the adenoids and the tonsils and help him function that way. So uh, hopefully he's happy with this and it'll hold up during his lifetime. And so that ends that 
portion of Android problems, I'm going to push F2. 